and welcome to Worship Wednesday. It's the fifth week of Easter time, and our theme of the week is witness. Let us all begin by making the sign of the cross together. In the name, name of the Father, the Son, and the, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. To be a witness involves two things. The first is seeing something happen that you remember and has had an effect on you. The second is telling others about what you have seen. The first disciples were witnesses to the resurrection, and we too can be witness to Christ when we recognise him at work in our world. The question is, how will you tell others what you've seen so that the good news continues to be heard? We would like you to reflect on these questions for a few moments. When have you witnessed Christ in your life? What is a piece of good news you've witnessed recently? Do you have any advice of how we can share the good news? Who do you think is a good example of being a witness? Being a witness and sharing our faith can be challenging. It was apparently also hard for St. Paul, which is why he asked in his letters to the early Christian community to pray for him, to be a good witness. Today, let us use the words of St. Paul to encourage us to be witnesses of the good news. Like St. Paul in Colossians 4, 3-6, let us ask God to grant us open doors, Colossians 4-3, praying at the same time for us as well, that God will open up the doors for our, the world. Paul speaks, Colossians 4 to 3, that we may speak with the mystery of Christ, for which I have been imprisoned. Clear speech, Colossians 4, 4 to 4, that I, I may clear in the way I ought to speak. Wise conduct, Colossians 4 to 5, conduct yourself with wisdom towards outsiders, make the most of the opportunity. Gracious speech, Colossians 4 to 6, let your speech always be with grace, as though seasons with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. How can you be a witness to what you've seen, heard, and learned about Jesus? How can you open doors, speak boldly, and share graciously? Our task this week is to create a poster that shares all the ways you have seen Christ at work in this world. We will stick these posters up in the chapel for others to see and continue throughout the Easter time to continue to bear witness for the good news. We are now going to hand over to Father Frank who will share his weekly words of wisdom. Good morning everybody, I hope you're okay. Um, I've had some very nice messages from Year 7 pupils in the last few days. Um, that's very kind, thank you much, very much for doing that, much appreciated indeed. Today we're thinking about witness. Now, I don't know if many of you have been to a church wedding before, um, but it can be very challenging if you're the priest or the minister. Um, a lot of people will come who um, may not have been in a church before, so as they say, oh, I don't know how to go on. And because they're nervous, they chatter and do things and um, they feel a bit detached. And, and so, I have a little ruse that gets them every time. There was one time um, a bloke was sitting at the back with his foot over the top of the bench chewing gum. And I just said in the pulpit, well, you're not here to sort of loll over a bench and chew gum, at which point I nearly choked. But there's a thing because they come, you see, and they think, oh, I'll get this over with and get to the real do, you see. So I say to them, um, I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking is, when's this vicar going to stop prattling about so we can get on with the celebration? And, and they sort of smile, because that is what they're thinking. And then I say, well, actually, this is the celebration, and whatever happens afterwards is thoroughly splendid, but it's not actually the real deal. And then I say to them, you are not spectators at this. You have not just come here to sit in all your nice finery and watch something that's happening in front of you that's nothing to do with you. First of all, you've been invited um, to be here, but more than that, when the bride and groom make their vows, they actually talk to you. They don't talk to each other, they talk to you. And they say in the official language, I call upon these persons here present to witness what I'm about to do. And so I will then talk to them about being witnesses, that um, you are, if you're a witness, you're involved. You are responsible for what you've seen. You're required to give your assent to what is happening. And it's amazing, this happens every time. These people are sort of lolling around in a bench, all of a sudden sit upright 
and they start taking notice. And if I ever get the chance to call and see them afterwards at the reception in the evening, you'll get these characters with pints of lager walking past going, hey, oh, Vicar, that were all right, that. And they're grateful because somebody made them feel involved. That's the point they weren't just sitting there looking at it but actually the bride and groom wanted them to witness what they were doing and that they would be responsible for what they've seen and also they would be responsible for um, helping the bride and groom to live the vows they made throughout their married life so it's not just about the marriage day but it's about the future and that's the sort of thing we think about when we talk about witness of course we often think about people at trials, people who've witnessed a crime, that they are responsible for what they've seen. Um, at the moment, there's two very high profile trials that would drive you completely bananas because they're nothing to do with anything. One concerns a lady called Amber Heard and her ex-husband, Mr. Johnny Depp. One is even worse. Two footballers' wives is called Wagatha Christie, um, Rebecca Vardy and Colleen Rooney. And they're all, it's all about their reputation and their ego and they're wasting the judiciary's time just to pamper themselves and it's a complete waste of time. There may be witnesses called eventually to prove the case one way or another, but I just think in both instances it's a complete waste of time. But from the point of view of the Christian point of view, it's very important that our faith is based on real events. Um, the Christian story is not a fairy story. It's something that actually happened and happens. And the reason that we know that are the witnesses who were there. And so St. John, at the beginning of his first letter, says, what we have seen and heard, we are telling you, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. What we have seen and what we've heard, they have seen it, they have heard it. They saw him alive, they saw him and took part in various things with him. They were witnesses to his crucifixion, albeit from afar because they were afraid, but more to the point, they were witnesses to his resurrection, to his rising and being alive, and thereby afterwards receiving the Holy Spirit to give them the strength to bear that, bear that witness to others. So these early disciples on whom our faith is based are witnesses they saw something they heard something themselves they are responsible for what they've seen and that is what they want to share with others so what about you and me then are we responsible for what we've seen sometimes when somebody gets into trouble at school one of the teachers will say well did anybody see this were there any witnesses and most of the time you don't want to own up to that because you don't want to snitch on your mate really um, but if it's something serious then you're required to do that it's, it's a responsible thing to do where some really bad behavior has taken place and of course many people are witnesses to domestic abuse to sadly to murders and so on and they are required to do that for, from our point of view what are we witnesses to well we're witnesses to what we've received when we read the scriptures, when we celebrate the Mass, we are seeing something of Jesus being alive in our midst. And the fact is, if someone ever called you a witness to your faith, what would you say? Would you deny it? Would you say, yes, this is what I've heard, this is what I've seen. I've seen this faith in practice and I've lived it and I'm proud to be a witness to Jesus being alive, being among us and engaging us in his life and love forever. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the Holy Spirit inspire in us to open up our doors and to listen to and share your word. Give us the boldness today to speak about you and all the good things we have witnessed that come from you. May we use our words and speech for good and strive to make a positive difference with our words. Let our speech always be filled with grace and always bring grace to each conversation and interaction we have so people come to know you. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.